Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is public input. There's a five minute time limit. Is there anybody for public input? Mr. Brack. Michael Bracken. I spoke to the chief uh, approximately a month ago and another time probably about two weeks ago about a coyote situation that's occurring on Tinker Drive and the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, when I spoke to the chief, I explained to the chief what was going on and the chief at that time turned around and told me that the Windsor Locks Police Department wouldn't get involved in it because it involved wildlife and his department would not handle wildlife. He advised me to contact DEEP, which I did, and I spoke to the director of the wildlife division there, Chris Vand, for quite a while, and I got information to pass on to the selectmen, and I obtained information that Chris Vand had passed on to me, packages, and I made packages for each selectman. One of the things that Chris Van had asked me to do was to talk to the chief and ask the chief to put a warning in the newspaper to warn the residents about walking their animals. First off was not to let their cats out at night. The other one was to walk any animals, canines, in an open, well-lit area and to carry something to either protect themselves or the canine and to throw at the coyote and to make noise if there was a, an attack on the animal that was being walked because the coyote was said that it, was, it would attack an animal that was being walked on a leash even if the master was with it or the handler was with it. I explained this to the chief at which time the chief told me that he was going to check on the information that I was giving him. And I found this a little bit strange because at first the chief turned around and told me he didn't want anything to do with it, but now he's double checking everything that I've done. And I didn't understand why, because he's basically questioning what I told him. First he turns around and tells me he doesn't want to be involved in it. The next thing you know, he's double checking me like I'm an employee of his and I'm not. The second thing is, is that as I had said, I put together packages for all the selectmen and I was intending upon going to the selectmen's meeting and giving a presentation as to what I had been told by Chris Van and DEP in order to get the possibility of funding together in order to trap this animal. This animal is going into our neighborhoods, he's going into our yards and he's attempting to get our domesticated animal, our pets basically smaller dogs and cats and other type of animals like that as rabbits. My next door neighbor was doing some gardening around the backside of her house and she was in putting in uh, flowers around the flower bed of her house. She turned around to grab a hand tool only to discover that the coyote was standing three to four feet behind her watching her. And she let out a scream and the coyote ran. She turned around and a couple of days later, or a time period later, I don't know the exact time frame, but she looked from her bedroom window and she saw the coyote down at the bus stop with the kids waiting for the bus. And she called the police department, she reported the coyote down at the bus stop with the kids, and the dispatcher gave her a hard time telling her that the police department doesn't respond to animal complaints that are wild animals. And she turned around and told the dispatcher that the coyote was with the children and if the coyote injured the children there would be trouble. At that time the dispatcher finally relinquished and sent an officer down there. And according to my neighbor, after going down to the bus stop with the children, the officer returned to my neighbor's house and gave my neighbor a hard time. In speaking to Mr. Van, he had explained to me that a coyote cannot be caught in a open trap. It needs to be caught in a leg trap. And the thing is, is that the leg traps everybody imagines is like the old Grizzly Adams traps that you see on television from the old movies where it's got the claws. The thing is, is it's a padded trap. The, it, it holds the animal in place and the animal is taken by the trapper and is later euthanized in order uh, to put the animal down. They can't be relocated because there are so many of them and they're territorial. The issue is, is that even though 
the chief turned around and all of a sudden, you know, one moment he's telling me he's not going to do anything, the next thing you know he's basically taking over everything that I've done and verifying everything that I had, had uh, checked on and even though I prepared packages for the uh, selectmen. Your five minutes is up, Mr. Bracken. Thank you. Could I have permission to explain the rest of the, the scenario since it involves the safety of the public? You have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else for public input? Mr. Russo. Uh, I have public input, but I would like to request of the entire body of the police commission that I be granted more than five minutes as I have a complaint that addresses the Chairman of the Police Commission. I have several documents which I'd like to submit to the Board of Police Commissioners. It pertains to <coughs> correspondence, uh, emails that have been exchanged between myself, the Chief, and Chairman Brace. And I would like to have more than five minutes to present my... You have five minutes. Okay, I will attempt to do it in five minutes. Is there a clock that we can watch the five minutes on? Because I don't believe that I had five minutes. You had five minutes. Okay, if I may approach the commissioners, I want to give you these documents, uh, which I guess you can read by yourself. Uh, basically, this begins with me writing to uh, town attorney Scott Storms, asking for help uh, from him to have the chief make a decision pertaining to my pistol permit application. Uh, that's the first page of the document. Uh, the second page of the document pertains to the current laws on what the chief's responsibility is to respond to my pistol permit application. I submitted my application August of uh, 2013. Uh, the, chief said, the chief has offered me various uh, reasons as to why my permit was held up and I, I granted him uh, unquestioned uh, an extension because I knew that a bunch of uh, the safe police were going to be overloaded with uh, the registration of magazines and rifles. And I believe that that should be cleared down. And all I want is a simple answer from the chief, either approve my permit or deny my permit. It's required that the chief give me an answer before I can go to the appeals board. Uh, I've written to him. I can see uh, no a reason why he shouldn't have uh, issued me my permit by this time, other than I'm claiming continued harassment and discrimination by town officials. Okay, uh, I wrote to, uh, it was supposed to be addressed to the whole police commission, and I don't know if Chairman Brace has shared this with you, uh, but basically the letter said uh, that I would request that the police commission to talk to Chief Osanich to see if we could resolve this issue. Okay, I got basically I, I wanted to do it quietly and not in public. Okay, uh, based on Chairman Brace's responsibility, I have no choice uh, but to make this public. Uh, I asked him to uh, put my letter uh, regarding the chief, uh, receive it as correspondence. He told me he wouldn't receive his correspondence. Uh, and therefore, he forces me to put this before the commission in the public input session. And I am going to request that each of those documents that I submitted to you be received by the commission under public input. Chairman Brace basically, I think, chastised me. He said, well, being a former police officer, you should know what the rules are. I responded to him, I do. And the third step in the process, before we he said I had the wrong form, that I shouldn't come to the Board of Police Commissioners. Chairman Brace forced me to make a complaint against him and to make a complaint against the chief due to his response. Okay? And again, I repeat, I want to resolve this without having to bring it to this level. Okay? I, he said that I should be familiar with the laws. This is the wrong forum. He says that I'm being treated equally. Uh, I'm making inflammatory comments. Well, I'm making those comments here again. I believe that this is an active effort by town officials to discriminate against me and harass me. I 
wrote the Scott Storms, and I don't know if the commission is aware, that I had a five officer response to a complaint that was, uh, to something that began with Ashley Taylor at the dog pound. I had the whole staff down there, except for maybe the chief and the captain. I wrote to him, I said, this is an excessive response, and I'm gonna pursue that, because I think it costs, I think it constitutes excessive force. I wrote a letter to the chief, asked him to include that uh, information as part of the report, I asked him to do a major report. I was denied uh, the major report. I wanted statements from every officer that responded down there. And this is not the end of it. Five minutes is up. Okay, thank you. I want to say thank you for your input. Anybody else for public input? I just wanted to make a complaint because when I found out about Miss Ashley Taylor not being on the police force anymore, I was really flabbergasted because she, there's a lot of good officers in here and there's a couple that we've had a hard time with, but she cares about the community and every time we have problems at the Motel 6 where I work, um, she was always there checking up on the community. We have the prostitution going on and she actually, the prostitution decreased because of her and what she had done. So I just wanted to say that. And I did write a letter to the commissioner's office. And when I called my grandfather, Doug Glazier, he told me that they didn't bother reading it and I didn't understand why. So they were there was no answer for that. So I just was kind of like shocked, you know, because I didn't know why they didn't respond to it. So, but I just wanted to let everyone know that she was a really good officer and a person and she cared about the community and everybody around it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else for public input? Yes. Okay. I came to Lisa Larks from, oh, from Mark. We just, we just need your name and address for the record. Oh, my name is Eliana Lauriano and I live at Three National Drive in Flux. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am the manager for Motel 6. I've been with the company for over 13 years. Um, I transferred to Winslow Locks, and when I took over with um, Motel 6 and Winslow Locks, I didn't know what else to do with the prostitution. Okay, we was even getting underage prostitution. I actually took up by himself, by himself, to text me in the middle of the night for me to round the property. Um, she, she would call the property at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, make sure it was no underage prostitution. Um, we, I felt safe. Um, my, I had a son. We, I took my son to ride his bike at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock with no problem. My guests felt safe. I haven't seen one officer stop by my property since Miss Taylor's not there. Um, prostitution is, cut, is increasing back. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the age. That would be the first thing I would respond. Um, don't know what happened, but it's sad to see a good officer leave. And I'm not saying every officer, you have a lot of good officers in your force. I mean, but sometimes you get some ones that give you a hard time just because you work for Motel 6. Um, it's a job, just like everybody else. They look down at you. I mean, we have time to, we have call, and they tell us we gotta get better clientele. That's the, they had told us on the phone. I mean, every time that I call and ask for a response, she didn't, she didn't question me about my clientele or anything like that. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen one officer stop by my property unless I made a 911 call. Did they respond? But just to stop by and say, give me the plate, you know, the list of the kids did you have in your property, any prostitution, not even once. And it's getting me worried now, the summer's coming, and prostitution is going to start increasing. Okay? Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Oh, Miss um, Glazier, we just need your address oh, for the record. Yes, 43 Kaye Ave, West Harvard. K-Y-E? Yeah, C-A-Y-A. C-A-Y-A. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion uh, that we move correspondence up from uh, item number six uh, and make that item number five and make the increase report item number six. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? 
discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I look for the uh, approval of the March 12th regular meeting minutes. Make a motion we approve it, Mr. Second it. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Traffic uh, calming Southwest Avenue. There are several good reasons to consider, consider immediate traffic calming measures on Southwest Avenue. One, high school students living on Southwest Avenue are within one mile of the high school and many walk to school. Veterans Memorial Park is number two. Playing fields are more frequently used for organized youth athletics. These include baseball, softball, soccer, and football. This, this not only places more young people near this dangerous road, but also increases traffic on Southwest Avenue. Number three, Southwest Family Park is being used more frequently, not just for organized athletics, but for playground equipment and for playground equipment and basketball court. I know the commission is aware of the speeding problem on Southwest Avenue. While the posted limit is 25 miles per hour, it's seldom observed by drivers. I suggest a three-way stop the intersection of Guilford and Southwest Avenue. Stopping traffic at this intersection will slow traffic near Veterans Park and Southwest Family Park. We'll also stop traffic at the crosswalk Winslow, crosswalk Winslow Public School students must employ while crossing Southwest Avenue. And uh, it is from Michael uh, Fidelli. Fidelli, yeah. And uh, May 12, 2014. Okay. That's an email. Another one is uh, dated April 17th to uh, Chief Osanich. Dear Chief Osanich, on behalf of my family, I want to thank you for the improvement in the Winter Locks Police Department. I know it hasn't been easy, but we can see how hard you are all trying. My family and I have moved out of town, but we have kept a close eye on the progress of the police department. We have heard and read in disbelief as some of the town's people, namely Michael Bracken and William Russo, and Peter Tomalonis have continued to be unfairly critical of the Windsor Locks Police Department. My brother is Henry Den, and my family and I asked that they stop using my brother's name to do it. These men never knew Henry and need to stop using his name to try to bring the department down and let them put their time and energy into moving Windsor Locks into a, posi into a positive direction it seems to be heading. I am saddened by the decision of the Labor Board bring Robert Koisman and back. I want to thank all those who had the courage to vote to appeal his reinstatement. Please continue to honor Henry's menu, memory by fixing the police department and making Windsor Locks a safe place to live in and raise a family. Sincerely, hi, hey Tron. Commissioners, uh, in your packet, uh, the Chief's report, I listed a number of items that would be of interest to you. Uh, we had eight officers attend the federally funded training, concentrating in the uh, Erie of Airport, train, bus, parcel, and hotel, hotel interdiction. The proactive uh, traffic enforcement contacts that enlisted drug activity. This training is normally only available on the West Coast, sponsors through the DEA. It was a great opportunity, a unique opportunity for our officers to have that training. It was held in Britain uh, PD uh, for numerous officers from around the state. We obviously got quite a few slots in that training. And, uh, it should take great in the future. Uh, we're also beginning, uh, about to begin a child uh, car seat installation program. In the near future, we have an officer going to training this month. Uh, and we really look that to be a great service to the community. Actually, save the lives of a child from an accident. Uh, the, the 
departments that do have that community, it's, it's a very uh, exceptional program and people are very happy about and making sure that the car seats are properly installed. The majority are not properly installed. Uh, it's quite involved, that you have force and also to run those clinics involved that it's well worth. Okay, additionally, uh, one of our third, uh, the third sergeant is presently attending the eight-day first-line supervisor class. So that'll leave us uh, one more sergeant to take that training. Uh, also, just to keep you abreast of training, the department will be conducting the final fire, firearms training session for uh, fiscal year 13-14 in early June. Once we have that completed, we will have completed all training goals that were planned for the uh, budget year. So everything we talked about If you didn't see it in the paper, uh, the Journal Inquirer and the Hartford Current recently conducted a nationwide survey, survey grading each police department in the area of freedom of information. I'm pleased to report that the uh, Windsor Locks Police Department received an A minus grade. Um, accolades go out to our record staff uh, who do uh, an exceptional job in maintaining the records and working through the complicated FOI uh, requirements. So I thank you, uh, Carol and Sharon. Yes. It's quite an involved process, so I thank you for that. I'm um, also uh, bringing up the speed of the uh, three new patrol vehicles from the FY 13-14 budget in outfit and are now assigned to the patrol fleet. Uh, this includes now a marked supervisor vehicle, which greatly, uh, and all the vehicles, but also the sergeant vehicle, greatly increases our visibility of the officers on patrol. So that's something we talked about early on, was ensuring that all the cars were marked up in the community, and we're definitely more and more people in the community that are seeing more officers on the uh, Recently, I submitted a grant request and the department was awarded six electronic citation printers at an approximate value of $4,800. Uh, this will allow the district vehicles to be totally equipped to electronically send infraction data directly to a uh, motor vehicle and infractions court. There will be no cost for the equipment, although we'll pay for the installation of the car. Um, and really, with the what this program is intended to do down the road is to provide all the racial data, profiling data, to be submitted electronically at some point. What's the cost of installation? Uh, we'll do it in house, but we're probably talking for additional parts, probably about $100 per unit. So something we can absorb. Yeah. Uh, the department has recently donated a beautiful wood uh, cherry cherry wood podium for the training roll call room. The podium was constructed by Mr. Leonard Brace, and all the costs for the project were donated by the Brace family. Um, as a department, we just want to say thank you. It really uh, professionalizes that room. We now have a room that we can bring outside agencies in, outside officers conduct training. That's a professional setting, so that's very important. On uh, June 12th, Officer Sean Berry and Robert Lang will once again be awarded by MAD, Motors Against Drunk Driving, for their excellent work in the areas combating drunk driving. Uh, both officers consistently lead the department in DUI arrests and really should be commended for the effort and time and the commitment that they put into that endeavor. Um, it, it's really a, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of paperwork for DUI arrests. Uh, it can take anywhere from three to four hours generally per arrest. Averaging at least 20 per year per person. That's quite a bit. Um, and we're always singled out at that event as being a relatively small department at the very high stat stats for DUI. And another reason, because of those stats, we also get quite a bit of money and DUI grant money for those extra patrols. We're reimbursed for it about three or four times a year. So it's very important getting those federal funds back to the department. Uh, just on a side note, I don't have it in there, but Officer Lang is also currently riding, uh, he's conducting, a, uh, he's raising funds for what they call the Police Unity Tour. He's riding a 300-mile bike ride to, from New Jersey to Washington, D.C. for Police Week. And all that money goes to the National Law Enforcement Memorial. He's done this a number of years. He's raised over $5,000. You know, and he does that over a three-day period. Is there border on that bike? No, 100 no. miles a day he rides. So. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, also in last week's Spring Fest, uh, New Dimensions and the Wellness Coalition made a $5,000 donation to the police department. Uh, excuse me, this was a combination for extra patrols, uh, for underage drinking, and also, also for the purchase and installation of what they call a hot and pop system, the K-9 uh, Jacks vehicle. That allows the, uh, the officer to remotely open the door if he's 30, 40 yards away from the vehicle and he needs the K-9 to be deployed. It's a little button on his belt, the door opens, and the dog can immediately respond. Also part of that is a temperature sensor uh, inside the vehicle. He's alerted if the temperature goes to above 90 degrees, the windows come down, the air conditioner comes on. It's quite a system, it costs about $2,500. It's been installed, uh, it works fantastic. As a matter of fact, he's at first deployment, you might have seen the article in the, in the uh, newspaper today or yesterday. Uh, at night, uh, we've had a rash of burglaries. Uh, also in the lawn, saw some people walking around on the businesses in the parking lot. Went out to confront them. He was about 30 yards from his car. They started running. He was able to deploy the dog, and he captured uh, two suspects in that case. So. Hit, hit that button and open the door and away. Right. Exactly. So I think we've had less than a week and a half. And, and just on a side note, that dog is doing a fantastic job. Many officers that are on the department have seen many dogs over the years. I've seen many dogs. I really got to say, I think it's probably the best police dog that I've ever seen. Um, and a lot of that, obviously it's the dog, but a lot of that goes to the handler. Um, because that's constant training, it's uh, constant. Uh, you've got to live and breathe that job 24 So, so um, fantastic decision to put in with that kid out there. Chief, who is this? It's a uh, coalition of uh, parents, and um, they're involved with the youth in town. Um, the director, it's uh, a lot of it's grant money, and the, uh, they do things like uh, uh, they partnered with the uh, the police union, and they did like a big bowling night uh, for the kids. You know, kind of a say no to drugs. They do a lot of counseling and also programs with the school now that we are also involved in. So really, the other thing with this is, if you do this so many years and you're recognized by the federal government, it again brings federal funds to the department. So potentially, if everything goes well, we'll be looking at like a four-year grant of $25,000 a year for four years. And that might come as quick as next year or the year after. If we continue what we're doing. So you know, all the stats are pointing that way. A dedicated group, and they really do a lot of work for us. Uh, next one, the department uh, continues to expand. Uh, we have a relationship now with FedEx uh, Corporation, and we do uh, random searches up there with the canine dog, uh, and that has been fruitful. Uh, and just in the past month, we made a 30 pound seizure of marijuana up there with Officer Malone and Canine Jackson. In the final vote on April 17th, Officer Ashley Taylor submitted a letter of re uh, resignation to the department. We wish her well in her future endeavors. And the department is currently, has, at least the department, currently two vacancies, and we are presently scheduling interviews. Are we looking for uh, certified officers? Sorry, right now, yeah. Okay. Um, that, uh, when would that training end the, uh, the airport hotel? When did it end? Yeah, when, when did that? It was approximately two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Two, two, two and a half get, weeks. Getting to Motel 6 and continue with yes. FedEx and expand that. Right. I had that training myself many moons ago. Right. So the, the Jetways. And Jetways, yes. yeah. yeah. Jetway training. Yeah, oh, I don't know what it's now. Very few people get to go to that, you know, unless they're part of the task force. <coughs> so, so we were uh, quite, quite lucky to get that. So we start. Networking on. Mm -hmm. The next few pages are the budget overview. Uh, there's any specific questions? Uh, we're looking, we're looking good in all the lines. Um, I don't see anything that's uh, uh, alarming. Uh, we're going to have excess in the salary line, which will cover any short overages and the other ones. Uh, obviously, what we're looking at usually is the. Uh, overtime line and the salary line. Um, everything 
everything else was in. We had, uh, let's see, uh, wait a second. Uh, encumbered. Oh, encumbered. Yes, that's uh, back at the two days. Okay. It's $10,000 encumbered. Right. Yeah, what that is, that is a purchase of ammunition. Okay. We have not received it yet. So we encumber the money when we get the when we get the ammunition and that money is earmarked. For that. So for that. that. Yeah. So that, that's already so taken out. Sort of safe. Put it into a little yeah, kitty right. and uh, even if it comes after July one, we still we have like a two month window okay. to still use the encumbered funds. So you're doing very well. We're gonna have uh, Overtime and so forth. Uh, your percentage is we should be around 85. Uh, but there, in, I, I see during the uh, uh, the 70s and the 60s, yep. uh, we should uh, have. Yep. Well, we did uh, we did transfer some funds two months ago into that account. But one thing I just want to show that uh, the reduction in overtime over the last year and a half. Uh, 2012, we spent $470,000. This year, we're looking, we're on track to about $370,000. So we reduced by 25% uh, from last year. And we're kind of looking at next year's rate of another 70% reduction. So uh, we've been continually reducing it. Any questions on that? But I have a couple questions on first report. The child car seat installation program, how are we going to get the word out about that? What are you going to do? That's something we'll actually advertise in local newspapers. Okay. We'll run, uh, there'll be an advertisement for it. We'll also do it during some of these things like the Spring Fest. Perfect. Okay, good. You know, we'll have a booth set up. And part of that is that we, we get donations from a lot of corporations for actual child seats. So if somebody comes to that 